Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat's on back order, and it's snowing! It's winter! Welcome back to our Pokemon White playthrough here on the channel. Episode number 67 coming at you. Double feature today. I did just upload one earlier today, so here is the follow-up there. Basically, today, we're going to finish up checking out the Unova region. We're going to go look at the Moor of Icarus. I also want to see maybe if we can happen to bump into Thunderous. I don't think it's going to happen. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and once we finish up with the Moor of Icarus, basically we're done. We can head off to the Pokemon League and continue the story finally. Also, we do have a few new additions to our collection. They're not on the team right now, but we did go and capture not one, not two, not four, but three. All three legendaries here in the Nova region of the, I guess, the Musketeer trio. We got Cobalion, Verizian, and Terrakion. And they're all in the PC just waiting to be used. If you want me to use one in the Elite Four battles coming up and when we take on, you know, Lord N, Team Plasma, let me know in the comments below which of the three would you like. The Steel Fighting Cabalion, the Grass Fighting Verizon, or the Rock Fighting Terrakion. <coughs> rock Fighting is going to be super effective on Reshiram. Just saying. Not trying to sway the uh, votes or anything. Anyway, on our current team, we've got Witwicky, our level 48 Chandelure, holding Spell Tag to boost up those ghost attacks. He is impish in nature. We've got Flash Fire for the ability, and the moves are Shadow Ball, Flame Burst, Nightshade, and Flash. Look at those stats. Everything is in the hundreds except for attack, but who cares? We ain't using no physical attacks on this guy. Very cool. Speed's only 100, but I love the special attack. Next up is our starting Pokemon, Seaward, our level 48 Duot. He is holding the Mystic Water, power up water attacks. His nature is Rash. We've got the Torrent ability on him, and we've got Waterfall, Surf, Cut, and Aqua Jet. I like his two offenses are in the hundreds. It's pretty nice. Next is our serious natured Marowak from Kanto at level 48. He is, he has, sorry, the Lightning Rod ability. We've got Bone Meringue, Thunder Punch, False Swipe, and Strength. Nice defense, 127. Next is another serious Pokemon, Grub, our level 49, Levani from Pinwheel Forest. He has Chlorophyll for the ability. We got Bug Bite, Leaf Blade, Helping Hand, and False Swipe. I think he's the most physically offensive on our team. What do you think? 140 for the attack stat. And last but not least, our most physically defensive member of the team, from Sinnoh, we have Medusa the Onyx, level 49 with the Eviolite held item. The nature is Hardy. We've got the Rockhead ability, 175 defense. Bear in mind, the Eviolite adds, I believe, 50% on top of that, so that is some math you can figure out. It's over 200. We've got Earthquake, Smackdown, Sandstorm, and the Rocky Polish. Alright, so let's head off to the Moor of Icarus and see what does that place have in store. What what does the Moor have in store forever... Nope, nope, can't say forever more. That's just repeating the word Moor. Can't do that. Wait, is there more stuff to check out here? Oh, I said more again, didn't I? Ah. <sighs> How do you get in this building? Wait, can you? There's ledges to jump down. Uh, uh, ooh. Can. I don't think I've been in here yet. What's up, peeps? My dad used to have a cool job in a faraway region. Did he? You're not the dad. Welcome. Hey, I have a lot of souvenirs that my sweetie's old co-worker gave me. I don't mind giving you one. Mahogany. I heard that the Rage Candy Bar is the favorite of my sweetie's old co-worker. Oh, member of Team Rocket I was. Long time gone. But Team Rocket bye bye a go go. I and my region went home. Make new Team Rocket I did. Sold myself I pledged. But now, I married them. Now for Team Rocket there is no time by me. But happy family is big hooray. Now this guy actually, he makes an appearance in one of the other Pokemon games. I believe it's Pokemon Gold or Silver. Or Gold and Silver, I guess. Isn't there a Team Rocket member who talks like that? I believe there is. And that's all there is for here. Okay, I thought there'd be more to this, but I mean, that's still kind of cool. Now, we can go slip sliding on the ice. Look at this, yay! But we can get encounters if we want. We're not going to, but with the water being frozen, we don't need to worry about any random stunk fish, or rather, stun fisk showing up. Oh, man! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, wait! This is going to make the Moor of Icarus kind of more fun. We're going to slide all over the place. Uh, we're going to surf. So how do we get there? I guess we can just cut across the water. I know it's cold. Hang on there, see where you'll be fine. Okay, there we go. Slip slide, slip slide. Oh boy. Well, we can just do this. I was like, how can we get there? Simply by surfing up here and then heading over from the water. Whee! There we go. Alright, anything else to check out? Does not look like it. 
So let's see what the Moor of Icarus is like in winter time. I mean, not that we've been here otherwise, but strength. Would we? We would have strength by this time, wouldn't we? Where do we get strength? Yeah, we need to go through Dragon Spiral Tower. So why would they put a strength rock here? It's not like it's slowing us down. Really. I don't know. Whatever's. We're all well and good. We got ourselves an Ultra Ball. That's some cash in the pocket. All right, heading down this way. Oh, we made it. Oh, how are we gonna get that item? Uh, well, this is not too hard actually. Hop in the water for a moment. Go over two spaces. Even one space is fine. And bump. We got a Carbos. That boosts speed, and we did that really fast. Is that how they planned it? Now, how can we battle her? Maybe we're doing this. Oh, she's not gonna look that way, is she? Huh. Ah. Oh. oh, wait. She doesn't attack us that way? Is there a way to bump into her? Hmm. It's gonna take some geometric algebraic in intelligencery. Uh. I do not believe there's a way to bump into her. Man, I should have come in here when it wasn't winter. Yeah, I don't think. We have to find a way to slide into her from a space. We can't stop at any of the points that she is on the par or on the plane with. No, I don't think we can battle her. That's kind of a letdown. Why are you doing standing on the ice? Are you stuck? I'm just wasting time trying to figure this out. There is no answer to this problem. Oh, well. I don't have the solution to our problem, sadly. We'll come back and maybe fight her some other month. Alright, sliding up this... Whoa! Check that out. What is over this way? Totally nothing. Alright. But I saw an item. Oh, there's another one of those water-related little trickeries. You see, this game is trying to sneak stuff past me with this whole... Oh, you can't slide wherever you want. I don't need to. I got surf. I can go where I want with surf. Now, this is going to slide us... Whee! All the way. Let us see what else we can see. Who out there likes to go skating when the season is right? Thanks for reminding me. I got to go skating this season. I love skating, and I never remember to go anymore. I have a pair of skates. I got them like, you know, five years ago, maybe even more. I've gone out skating maybe twice. Here in the area, there are, I think there's at least four, maybe more, but I know there's guaranteed four different skating rinks that are, you know, they have public skating hours. And I just love to go out on the ice. When I was younger, my father wanted to get me into hockey because, like, he's a big fan of hockey, and I guess, you know, I'm the twinkle in his eye, the chip off the old block. He wanted me to follow in his footsteps, and I didn't really like playing the game, but I love being out on the ice. And what I find fun is to start power skating, skating as fast as you can, and just the, the thrill of the speed, you know, I like to play Sonic the Hedgehog games, just the speed of rocketing down the ice, the wind blowing past you, I really like it. Fun fact, it didn't take me until maybe a few years ago to learn how to stop properly. I used the boards usually to stop myself back in the day, and just, and I would stop, you know, no big deal. But I eventually decided I want to learn how to stop, so to the YouTubes I went, Checking out how to do what they call the uh, the snowplow stop, I think it is. I don't know the name of it, but actually I basically learned from watching YouTube how to stop properly on the ice. And I'm okay at it, not perfect, but whatever. If you are prepared, you don't have to worry. I like that berry. Can I plant some more, please? No, of course not. Welcome to you, Nova. I'm researching what kinds of Pokemon live around here. That way I can plan which Pokemon I should take a long. Take a long what? A long walk with? Got a max elixir. I shall snatch that up nicely. And what else can we find? But yeah, so who out there loves skating? As I say, I do, because it is a fun way to pass the time. What can we find over this way? Don't skate me. Ah! Let's fight. Let's go, Ranger. Pokemon trainers nurture friendship with their battles. And that's another question about the uh, Pokemon Go announcement about the trainer battles coming up. Are you going to gain any, maybe, friendship bonus for that? Because you're technically playing against each other, so that might count as boosting friendship. 
But I don't know. Another thing I was thinking is, are you able to battle people of your own team? And I would imagine you would be. But in that sense... Would that be considered training? And would you gain part of your uh, training medal? Perhaps. You know, the training medal that we used to have back when the old gym system was up where you could battle your own gym and boost up the prestige to be able to add more Pokemon. Not everyone got to complete that trainer medal, so this might be a way they can bring it back. Do some training against a fellow player by battling them, and maybe boost that up? I don't know. I don't mind the fact that it's a legacy, they call, medal right now. Like, I only have the silver training medal in Pokemon Go, but I don't mind that I can't boost it up. But other people are like, that's, that's a permanent stain on my record, that one silver medal. I can't stand that. And it's like, why though? Please accept this citrus berry. I'll take it. I should have been here sooner. Get these citrus berries. Stay still and listen carefully. Hear the sounds of nearby Pokemon. The breath of trees and swamps. Swampy breath? Oh boy. How do we get this item? Oh, don't tell me we can't. Oh, man. Wait, wait. No. No, no. We can't get this... <sighs> my heart is broken. My my hopes are dashed. My my hopes are basically the firstborn child of the Incredibles family, the Parr family. <laughs> if only the stump wasn't in the way, we could have done it. We can get close to it, but no, it's a no go. Well, let's do. Let's go down here. Let's talk to this guy. If there are trainers, I just have battles with them. Because they show me water type Pokemon I've never seen. So I'm gonna do this guy a solid. You know, I was gonna have Witwicky in here. I'm sure he's got water types. It's a Bastion. But I'm gonna let him see a water type. Maybe he hasn't seen our little Dewop before. Granted, we don't have the best moves against a water type, but we are over 10 levels, so I think we should be good with the old cut attack. What do you got, Bastion? Oh no, you turned me into a water type! Wait. No effect. Alright, go ahead, cut attack. Do you think we're ever going to see anything happen with Bastion? Because, like, nothing's really happened with it. It's... What I like about it is the unique feature that there's a blue stripe or a red stripe. You know, it's all well and good, but like, is that all it has to offer? Ow! That was a critical hit. Why would you do such a thing? Oh no, Stung Fisk. I'm going to risk it. We're going to surf. Get out of here. There's no way you're surviving this, and you ain't hitting me with no discharge. Goodbye, Stung Fisk. I can't say your name right, I don't care. I can, Stunk Fish. I'd actually, I prefer to mispronounce it by calling it Stunk Fish. It's a fish that stunk, don't you know? It's like the breath of the swamp right there. If I find water, I drop him with my fishing line. Because even with a puddle, there may be Pokemon that I've never seen. But why can we not get this item? Why is the stump in the way? If only there's a way you could actually drop a block or something to, uh, Limit your movement. We're so close to it! Ah, it's like agony! So I guess we're done with the Moors of Icarus. I'm sorry, the individual Moor of Icarus. There's only one. There are two things we couldn't do here in the wintertime. Grab that item and beat up that lady person. But we can come back another time. So I wonder if there's anything else we can check out with the wintry weather upon us. I don't think there would be. I mean, we could go check out, I guess, uh, you know, Undella Town. Oh, wait, that's post-game. Can't do it. Thanks, game. Um, cold storage. I, have we checked out everything here in Driftville City? I kind of want to go back to Driftville City and just see. We're going to do it. I think we've already done everything, though, but... Yeah, never know. I'm trying to think if there's any places that we have not accessed yet. I'm going to do a quick heal while we're here. In fact, wait, Wiki leveled up, didn't he? We've got to switch him out of the active spot. Let's get, uh, let's let Marowak lead the way next. 
and we're just about time to add a new Pokemon to the team, and I guess we'll do some grinding for the next part, because if there's nothing more to check out in the Unova region, we're heading in to take on the Elite Four. So again, let me know which Pokemon should we add to our team, and I'm okay with adding one of our legendaries, especially <clears throat> Terrakion, not to sway the vote, but simply because it gave us the hardest time to catch. So that must mean something, right? I better check this out. I don't think there's anything more to see weather-wise in any other areas. Is there anything here? Have we been in here? What is this? The old guy in Route 6 searching for legendary Pokemon. If you're interested, go talk to him. Oh wait, I should go talk to the guy that told us about Mr. Alton Cave and Cavalion. Have I not been in here? I don't recognize this. Do you think all people in the world can understand one another? Not through words, but I mean, you know, if I walked up to someone from a different country, that's a greeting. And then if I went like, they would know I'm ready for a battle. I see, I think so too. Happiness is here today, gone tomorrow. There is no everlasting happiness, so don't be greedy. That's right, don't be greedy. When I go to the entry link next time, I'd like to register a pass power and make everyone smile. Then do it. People who visited the entry link hid items somewhere. Entry link is unique, isn't it? Why did she talk slower? I got a fast text speed on. This happened to me once after I crossed a bridge. When I was at a loss, the person who helped me was a total stranger. After all, helping each other is important in life. And it's definitely true. Help your fellow man or woman or cat, if need be. And just make the world a better place. Like they say, pay it forward. Do a good favor for somebody. It'll come back to you in some way. Living is using time given to you. You cannot recall lost time. Don't forget that. Don't be greedy. I want I want blah, 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 I want other people to like me. There is a reward. It's okay to help people with such motivations. Because helping is itself a great thing. And that's kind of what I talk about too. Whenever I'm being helpful, I always say it's it's got a slight, I guess, selfish side to it, where it's like by doing something good for someone, I'm building up good karma in the uh, the atmosphere, the uh, the ethos. Is that the word? I don't know. But it builds up a potential good thing, good payoff for me in the future. Now, is that really... How did I miss this? Ultra Ball. I guess not really important. But by doing something good for somebody, I always think, you know, that might come back and help me out in the future. And I guess it's not really selfish because I'm not guaranteed of something good happening to me. But just the thought that it could makes me think it's not entirely selfless. But I mean, if someone gets helped... That's really the important thing, important part of helping someone. So, I'm probably too hard on myself for that. You know? We're gonna leave this Bastion where it is. You're good there, buddy. Like what I've been doing with some of my fellow classmates, I am trading them Pokemon and Pokemon Go that I have plenty of, like plenty of spares, and it's gonna help them out. I've already traded a Whale Ori to each one of them. Did I go over this way? Is there anything to do over this way? I don't think so. Wait, there might be. But I think I've already checked it out. We'll check it out again just to be sure. But trading these Pokemon to my uh, fellow classmates, actually something amazing did happen. I traded a Whale Lord to uh, one of my classmates. Goes by the player name of Worst Gamer EXE, and the Worst Gamer has one of the best Pokemon because I traded a Whale Lord to him and it became lucky. Not just that, but you know how when a Pokemon in Pokemon Go gets traded and becomes a lucky Pokemon, its stats can increase. He now has a 100% perfect lucky Wailord in Pokemon Go. Meanwhile, I got an Apom that's lucky. Probably like 80%, 90%. But still, I'm not upset. I ain't bitter. I mean, it's just cool that I was able to provide something like that. And it was just random, so it's not like I intentionally said, I'm going to give you this perfect Pokemon. But it became perfect, so that's fine. I've heard that there are also Pokemon that should be called Cabalion's allies. You are right, there are, and I have them. So, nothing... Oh, wait, hang on, this is the quiz. Is it? No, the quiz is in Icarus City. Right, I could go back and do that. I might want to check out Charstone Cave. Where's the best way? I'm going to go back to Nostralton City, I believe it is. And let's try entering Charstone Cave from the other side. Because I believe there's another floor we have not checked out yet. I mean, I've only got six minutes for my timer. But I think one of our episodes recently went a little bit shorter. So maybe I'll make this extended by a bit. 
One step into the cave, we find a shiny nothing. Had you been shiny, that might have been worth it. Now, where are my repels? Do I have repels? I'm gonna check if we have repels, because I kind of don't want to waste time with random encounters. As much as I would like to find a shiny, I highly doubt we're gonna find them. Um, we got a max repel right here. Let's use this and just head down the stairs the quickest way possible. Right here. All right. Now, where does this take us over here? Because there's another staircase leading downwards. What do we find? Oh, this is where you can find Tim Pole, I believe. Oh, it's a trainer. I'm really serious about training. I even visit this electrified cave to train myself and my Pokemon. Is this... Actually, no. I know the answer. Is this where you can evolve Magneton and Rose Pass? Pretty sure it is. Drillbur. You are weak. To water. But we don't have water on this Pokemon. We do, however, have Thunder Punch. Which has no effect. So let's Bone Meringue instead. It's a one-hit KO! Check that out. Okay. What else you got? You got a Zeb Striker. Go ahead. So, my uh, fellow classmates and I, we've been checking out some video footage of, you know, fan-made Pokemon and uh, fan-made potential evolutions and stuff. And one of them was, I believe, Zeb Striker became a fl uh, electric and flying type, and it had, like, wings. And that reminded me that people have said Rapidash should eventually evolve into a flying type. Now, back when the Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon, actually, even X and Y before they were coming out, there was some talk about you know, whatever new typings there might be in the game. Ooh, that's not bad, lowering the foe's accuracy with a held bright powder. Uh, someone was saying, or I'm sure many people were saying, that if there was a new type added, light would be an interesting type. And someone said that maybe Rapidash would evolve to a fire light type and have like wings like a Pegasus or whatever. Even at an electrified place like this, if somebody challenges me, I will take that challenge. That is an ace trainer. Am I an ace trainer? Because I'll take challenges. But, yeah, some pretty interesting ideas for fan-made Pokemon. I wonder if we'll ever see more Mega Evolutions come back to the game. We're uh, seeing some fan-made uh, art of those. And with Mega Butter, or sorry, Mega Beedrill being a thing, wouldn't Mega Butterfree sort of be another thing you think would be added? I mean, not necessarily, I guess. Because uh, whenever they had a, what would you call it, like, you know, counterpart Pokemon together, they don't always match up properly. Like, back in Gen 1, we had, uh, what was it, Electabuzz, Magmar, and Jinx were all kind of a trio that they made up. And then, of course, that continued into Gen 2 when... This is kind of scary for Marowak. That's really scary for Marowak! It's with her strength, though. Yeah, so those three had a uh, little trio thing going on. But, it continued on when they each got a baby form in Gen 2. Let's get Grub. But they kind of broke that trio mold when they had Electivire and Magmortar added to Gen 4, but Jinx didn't get an evolution. So, why is my nose itchy, by the way? Don't ask me. Well, I'm asking you. What's the answer? You don't know? I don't know. No one knows. But my nose knows. I'm just not talking. Anyways, the uh, other thing, like, in Gen 3, there was Shuffet and Duskull. Of course, they each had evolutions of Bayonet and Dusclops. Gen 4 gave us Dusk Noir, but no evolution for Bayonet. However, Gen 6 gave us Mega Evolution for Bayonet. So we have one permanent evolution in Dusk Noir and a Mega Evolution in Mega Bayonet. So, what was I talking about? Pokemon evolve crazy, like, don't they? Hyper Potion, all right, we got that. Let's grab before our repel runs out. Whatever this TM happens to be. Can I send that to Pokemon Go? I need more Meltan candies. Whoa, that kind of sprung up in the middle of nowhere. We got a non-shiny Drillbur. So I'm going to say we're pretty much done with Charge Stone Cave. I can't think of anything else really to do in here. If I've missed anything, feel free to let me know. And I can come back and check it out. Uh-oh, Repel wore off. Do we have another one? We must have another one. Show us the Repel. Where is it? Where is the Repel? We must have one. Don't say we don't. Don't say we don't. Ah, oh, we got a Repel. Alright. That's our last one! We got a Pearl? When did we get a Pearl? I mean, I know I played through per uh, Pokemon Pearl. Wait. Wait. 
Nope, nothing. I just wasted steps of repel. Uh oh. We're gonna get attacked. Let's get out of here. We're pretty much on time, too. Look at that. Not a single attack the entire way out. It's like, even if the repel runs out now, we'll be fine. See? Not a single attack. Ah! That was one step after. It's you again! Joltik. Just. Get out of my way. Can't even get knocked out. Honestly, I didn't think it would, though, so let's just. Good job. Alright, no more attacks, fortunately. We're gonna get out nice and simply. Oh, oh, it's my friend Gears. You're gonna slow me down? You're gonna. I'm not that mean. Get out of my way. Now. Thank you. If someone hit me on that last, last, last step, I would have taken them down. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. Let me know in the comments which Pokemon should we add to our team. We'll do a little bit of a quick recap here. Uh-oh. Stop the timer. No. Don't start the timer again. I clicked the wrong button. That's my bad. All right, so our team is currently sitting at level 48 for the weakest. Let's take a look at our PC. So at level 48, we have potential of... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about. We have... Uh, let's do it like this. Put you up here. Bear with me as I do a little bit of rearranging. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, let's do it this way. I'm wasting so much time, but I'm sure you don't mind. In fact, I'm not sure you don't mind. I'm going to assume you don't, because I'm doing it anyways. Alright, now, the top three rows are all up for grabs. We have a Clefairy. We've got Cliff, we've got Dratini, we've got Arbok. We have Burrow, we've got Dive Bomb. Nope, that's Gary. Dive Bomb, where's Dive Bomb? Oh, down below. We've got Scruff. We've got Smarty, Majestic, Squeak, Bukemon, Snoozer. I'm not sure what, I wasn't sure what Snorlax that was. And Stinger. But in addition to all of these Pokemon from previous games, we also have the trio here. Now in proper captured order, Cabalion, Verizion, Terrakion. You're out of Pokedex order. That I don't care about. So, any one of those 15 Pokemon we can add to our team as one of our, our final, basically, active team member. Let me know. In fact, I don't want to sway the vote. Get to a nice neutral screen. Any one of those 15 can be added to the team. So which one should I add? Because we're going to do a grinding montage in the next part of our playthrough here and prepare to take on the Elite Four. So let me know which one we should add to the team. And just to recap what our team currently is, we've got... The ground type Marowak, water type Seaward, fire ghost type with Wiki, grass bug type uh, Grub, and whoops, rock ground type Medusa. Of course, Chirp is just hanging out. We could actually add Chirp as well if you want him as an active team member. He is the proper level now too. So let me know down below if you don't mind doing so. Which Pokemon should we add to our team to round out a nice even six and prepare to take on the Elite Four? But that is going to be it for today's video. I want to say, of course, as always, thank you folks for checking things out here on our channel. And again, apologies for being slack the past little bit, preparing for Pokemon Go videos and such like that. It takes up a lot more of my, let's call it real world time, because i got to go out, record, come back. It does take quite a bit of editing for the Pokemon Go content, because i got to overlay two videos plus audio. It's just, it's moderate nightmare, but a good nightmare if that makes any sense, which it does not. So let's just ignore what I said. Anyway, if you want to see some more content from Professor Chaz, you can, first of all, check out the Pokemon White playlist that's linked in the description and get caught up on all of our Unovan adventures. Or you can subscribe for some more general Pokemon content that gets uploaded usually on a daily basis. You can also join as a member to help support the channel and get some member-specific perks, such as Pokemon TCG Online Code Cards, which my members are going to be getting two of this month to make up for the fact that I missed Reverse GTS featured on the, uh, or sorry, for the month of December. Nope. November. We're having one for December. I am moderately guaranteeing it. Can you moderately guarantee something? I don't know, but I just did. But if you want to see some more content from myself as far as Pokemon is concerned, or just other random musings from my old 
grain case. I've got my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord all linked in the description as well, which you can go check out and follow me on those, or you know, one or the other, or all three respectively, if you like. But that's going to be it for today. So once again, let me know which Pokemon to add to our team down in the comments below, and I'll get to the grinding ASAP. As for right now, Professor Chaz is signing off. Thank you folks once again for checking things out today, and I will catch you next time.